Hello and welcome to Rough Sword Woodcrafts. My name's Alan. A lady contacted me on Facebook asking me to build a planter box and trellis to fit a specific space in her garden. I took the client's size requirements and example photos and designed the solution on the 3D software on my iPad. This and the price were accepted and soon after the wood was delivered, the point where our project becomes very real. First cuts were to cut a rebate out of the four legs, too long and too short. This forms a strong surface to join the front and side panels onto and makes a nice decorative corner with no visible end grain or joints. I did it in two passes to not strain my table saw with the treated timber. realised here that I didn't put my splitter on the back of the table saw, something I corrected later down the line. Next, to cut the front and side panels to length, there are five on each face, so 20 in all. The back panels came in slightly longer than the trellis length. They were cut slightly too long by the timber yard, which is better than too short, I guess. After discussing with the client, she was keen for the increase in length, as it would fit the space she had even better. I needed therefore to add a strip onto the back legs that would fill the space at each end of the trellis slats and that hid the gap nicely. I pre-drilled the trellis slats as I knew I was close to the ends, plus I'd be assembling all this on site so I wanted to make it as quick as and convenient as possible. As I say, with assembly on site, I wanted to prefab as much as I could fit in my car, so I added treated wooden batons to the five pieces on every face. I originally intended to remove these once it was all assembled, but decided to leave them in place for extra strength and rigidity. Here you can see the front panels being screwed to the rebates in the front legs. The same pattern was applied uh, on site for the back legs. One piece here was particularly twisted, so a clamp as I was screwing it in solved that issue.
now one of my favourite parts, using my new Katsu router and a template I made from a Perspex sheet to route the recess for my logo disc to sit in. I wasn't sure what orientation the planter was going to have in the client's garden and wanted the logo to be fairly unobtrusive, so I put it on one side. Turns out that it's mostly hidden by a bush. I'm not too concerned. Hopefully someone will see it in years to come and look it up on the web and find the worldwide sensation that is roughs on woodcrafts. Well, we can all dream. I attached the disc with some glue, then sprayed it with some plastic or clear varnish to protect it from the elements. screwed the floor pieces in the same way as the sides and front to make on-site assembly a bit easier. I didn't video the assembly process in the client's garden, but assembly was fairly straightforward. Once I'd constructed the main planter itself, I fitted some locking casters that she had supplied, plus added some spare stock that I'd brought as extra support under the base, given the weight of the soil that would go into it. I then lined it with thick black plastic using wide head clout nails. I made sure to attach it fairly loosely to allow room for it to settle once the soil was added. Here's a little bonus. The client had sent me some Pinterest boards with some other ideas she was looking to make. One of them was a little light for a porch or deck. I decided to use some of the scraps from the planter to make some little tea light holders that she could hang up in her garden. A fairly simple design with half lap joints and angled ends held together with screws and pieces of dowel.
for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to like and subscribe and leave me any comments. Thanks so much.